Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another Venom vlog. And today we're actually going to do a really quick Venom versus because the battle, it, although it takes place throughout most of the issue, it is only one issue. Uh, this is Venom versus Daredevil. And this was a storyline called Fall from Grace. I think it was like six or seven chapters long. And it ran throughout uh, like the early or late uh, 1993, like around that time. And it was one of my first times getting into the character because I think right around this time or right before it, Frank Miller did uh, his like Man Without Fear miniseries and uh, with John Romita Jr. And I really, really liked that book a lot. So I was like, all right, let me give the monthly book a chance. And at this point, Daredevil was in a new costume and Scott McDaniel was the artist. And the, uh, the actual writer was a guy named Chichester. I think his last name was D.G. Chichester. And uh, so you had, you know, uh, who's a writer I don't think I've ever read anything else of outside of this. Because I think Anne Nascenti did some Daredevil stuff that I read. Um, but then, you know, that was after this. I had started getting into it around this era. And uh, you have this cool costume here that he had. is like black and red. And uh, he was hanging out with this guy named Siege, I think. He was like this giant robot dude. And they're taking this guy named Basento or Basenti or something like that, this, uh, this, this guy who was part of the, the hand, the hand comes in, they get defeated and they disintegrate into nothing. And then uh, the ninja here, uh, the main, one of the main guys, his name is Basento. And uh, he's basically uh, decided not to fully give his humanity up. And so he didn't dust away. So he might have answers that Venom is looking for. So apparently Venom shows up coming from San Francisco because at this point Lethal Protector had already come out. So he's still kind of like an, he's in the anti-hero phases and Daredevil knows this because when he shows up, it's a lot of it's being narrated, but I think by Daredevil. Um, or maybe it's the narrator, you know, just the, the, the ca prose caption of the book or something like a narrator, but it does feel like it because, uh, you know, he knows a lot about Eddie Brock. He even says, like, yeah, this is Venom, uh, a.k.a. Eddie Brock. And he's like, and he's a guy who was a journalist who got bonded with an alien costume. So Daredevil does his homework on people, which makes sense. You know, he's a lawyer, too. So uh, it, it was really cool to see that because a lot of times when these characters show up in the books, you know, you have someone go like, oh, I've heard of this guy or, yeah, I vaguely know about this guy. Daredevil knows about Venom. And he knows about Eddie Brock. So it's kind of cool that they have that, you know, kind of that background there. Uh, but so anyway, Daredevil is uh, trying to protect this guy, Pacento, but Venom wants him. Because Venom found out that there's a guy named Pasim who Pacento uh, is connected to. And Pasim apparently came up with this virus or this drug that would, if injected into Venom or Eddie and the symbiote, would help alleviate their weakness to fire and sound. So somehow this virus... Uh, the, and, and news of this virus got to uh, Eddie. And Eddie's like, look, if there's a virus out there that could uh, remove our weaknesses, then we want it because that would help us have no weaknesses so we could just always be out there fighting and be a better hero than Spider-Man. And that's pretty much his only motivation. So he shows up and starts fighting and kicking the crap out of Siege and Daredevil just to get this guy so he can get answers. So it's a purely selfish mission. He's not here really to protect any innocents or nothing like that. But he gets in these great fights. And there's even a time where he's trying to bite down on Daredevil. And Daredevil puts his you know baton in his mouth to pry his mouth open. The artwork's okay. I mean, this is early work from Scott McDaniel. So uh, it's not great. And even some of Scott's later work, I like it on certain books like Green Arrow. I kind of like what he did on Green Arrow and stuff. Some books it works for me and some it doesn't. Uh, this one though, it's okay. His Daredevil stuff's pretty good. Uh, and this was early on in his career. And he had some interesting panel layouts. It's not just all like square panels and stuff. He actually shows action and, and does like these interesting little panels and angles and things uh, with Venom. I like how he draws Venom. Venom's pretty sleek and monstrous looking in this one, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, Daredevil and, and Siege get their tails kicked and Venom gets away with Basento. And then brings him to a rooftop and starts questioning him, trying to figure out what's going on. And meanwhile, the media and other people are starting to already figure out that maybe Matt Murdock is Daredevil. So this is like, you know, in those days when they're, when they're talking about that. Before the, you know, the time where he wears a shirt, which is recent years, where it says like, you know, Matt Murdock wears a shirt that says, I'm not Daredevil. And Daredevil, I think, and as a joke meme or something someone put out there, it said it was Daredevil wearing a shirt that says, I'm not Matt Murdock. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. So this was kind of before that stuff. But uh, yeah, you have all these like little characters and, and elements from the story like bled throughout. But the main thing we're focusing on here is the battle. And so whenever you get to a page where it's like, you know, the side story, like the main story or whatever, the side story that goes through all of these issues, it's told in typical comic panel fashion, which I really like. It was a really neat uh, design uh, you know, uh, layout design from Scott McDaniel from looking at the story. I think that's very good storytelling there uh, from him and the writer. I don't know who planned it because sometimes, you know, in, in, especially in these days in Marvel, but sometimes a lot in comics, uh, an artist will draw out the panels based off of like a rough outline by the writer. 
and then the writer will go back in and do the the dialogue with the lettering um and you know they'll, they'll come up with like a letter like a dialogue script uh so it's hard to say who planned this out but whoever did great storytelling it really works i'm going to guess maybe mcdaniel did but that's only because i don't know too much about the the writer's work and how this was laid out i don't know i don't know if he did a full script or if he just did a you know a rough script but either way then it slowly fades back into panel panel boom and go back to that crazy action um which is awesome and you there's like a whole boat gets thrown at venom by the siege guy like the rock he's like uh, using rockets and super strength and he throws an entire ship at venom and uh, and venom you know manages to get away with Basento, but then daredevil shows up and goes to town he like you know trips venom but venom's like hey look you're not hurting me the suit's protecting me and uh you know daredevil's like good to know and then he just starts boom just hitting him from every angle taking down he breaks his uh baton in half as to two littler smaller batons and hits him right in the ribs you know cracking his ribs uh, and he just goes to town on him. And then that's when Siege comes down and knocks Venom down and puts his blaster right to his head. And he's getting ready to kill Venom. And that's when Daredevil says, no, we're here to we're here to talk. And Venom's like, what? And Siege's like, what are you talking about? Look at this freak. He's going to kill us. And uh, Daredevil's like, no. He's like, this guy wants to be a hero. Let's give him a chance. He's like, we've all made mistakes. We've all done things bad. He's like, I think this guy deserves a shot. He's like, so here's the deal. If you want to be a hero, let this virus thing go. Because the thing that makes us heroes is that we have weaknesses. We have things that we can overcome. And only by overcoming our handicaps can we truly be heroes. And Eddie kind of sits there and muddles that for a minute. And he's like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. He's like, you're trying to get in my head. You're trying to get in my head. He's like, get out of my head. And Daredevil's like, look, be the judge of what you think I'm doing. I'm not here to manipulate you. I'm here to tell you. If you really want to be better than Spider-Man, then here's your chance. Like, just deal with your weaknesses. If you're weak to fire and sound, just deal with it. He's like, find another way to overcome it because that is what will make you a true hero. Taking shortcuts is what, uh, you know, villains do, what bad guys do. And so Eddie's like, fine, we'll go, we'll be better. And then he, you know, runs off. And Siege is just like, I cannot believe that that worked. And Daredevil's like, yeah, whatever. You know, <laughs> he's like, uh, it's like just a, something, you know, someone told me once and whatever. So then the story kind of ends with him and Electra. And he's talking about Electra. And there's like a sigh. They find Vicento and he's been stabbed. Um, and then there's like, you know, a, a memories of Electra. And it looks like she was stabbed. He was stabbed with the same kind of sigh that uh, Electra had. But Electra is kind of dead at this point, or so he thinks. But then we find out that there's, you know, someone Electra like who is uh, running around, and she kind of looks demon-like, too. She has red eyes. Uh, so I don't remember the rest of the story because I think I read it once way back when, and then I don't have the books anymore. I actually found this, again, on Mile High Comics. I think I got it for, like, a dollar, um, you know, in their, one of their back-issue sales where they had 50% off stuff. So I picked, I just threw this in there because it's like, oh, yeah, Venom showed up in a Daredevil comic once. I should do a Versus episode on it. But this one they actually fought. Like, unlike the Nightwatch one where they, like, fought for, like, a page, and then after that they just, like, worked side by side through the whole thing for two issues. This one was them fighting. The whole time and i liked it it was good like the angles were pretty neat the fight was pretty brutal and it showed daredevil how capable he is uh standing his own against a character like venom and i would like to see more of that i actually really want to see more interactions between daredevil and venom especially considering they're both catholic men <laughs> who uh, have you know kind of that similar approach to things they both have uh, you know a faith in a way and they also kind of run from their faith in a way i feel like there's a lot of good similarities between eddie brock and matt murdoch and of certainly a lot of differences but i feel like there's enough there that would make a very interesting story so hopefully some writer out there uh does a mini series like a venom daredevil mini series i would love to see that um i think that would work really really well and there's a lot to explore with these two characters because as far as i know this is one of the only times they've ever or maybe the only time they've ever crossed paths in the main marvel universe uh, but if there is other instances that you or instances that you can remember let me know down in the comments below and i'll try to track those issues down and we can talk about them too in a future episode but this is a short one just like a little 10 minute episode and it was because uh, there's not much to do or talk about here this is part of a greater story if you want to read it yourself i think it's been recollected in some format i'm sure uh, but this is the only issue i have and it's the only issue with venom in it so this is the only one I want to talk about for the show. So let me know what your thoughts are. If you read the book, if you haven't, let me know down below. I think you can maybe find the digital copy of this on Comixology, but if not, you can find it in any back issue bin for like a dollar or a quarter, um, or you can look it up online or Mile High Comics. Like I said, I order from them time, from time to time. If you order like over like 50 or 60 bucks, you get free shipping. So usually that's what I'll do. I'll just get like a big pile. And that's where I got a lot of these Venom one-offs that we're going to talk about in some of these Versus episodes, was I just ordered like whole runs 
over there, but then I would also like look up other issues Venom was in, and I came across this one. I was like, oh yeah, I do remember that from when I was a kid. So uh, I wanted to reread it and explore it. So that's my thoughts on it. That's what happens in it. But I want to hear what your thoughts are now that you know the story. Let me know down below, and we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We have more Venom verses coming up very soon. These are the only two I could squeeze in this week, but I'll try to squeeze in more, especially the Avengers one with the vault. Uh, I'll try to get to that one very soon and get that up during the weekend where Endgame comes out, uh, which is coming up soon too. So I'll try to get that done. And then we also have like a Dark Hawk uh, episode we're going to do uh, featuring two different Dark Hawk storylines where he met Venom. So I don't know if I'll do them in two different episodes or one episode, but we'll talk about that coming up. Venom 2099, we're definitely going to get into. Uh, Kingpin as Venom, we'll talk about in an episode coming up. And then also Venom versus Wolverine and in a sequence with uh, them versus a character called Nightmare from Doctor Strange from Marvel Comics Presents, which I'm really excited for. So uh, we're going to get into all that very soon. So thank you guys for being patient with me. More Venom stuff coming up. Let me just get through these MCU reviews and a couple other things that I'm working on. Uh, things I'm working on behind the scenes, writing and stuff. I got a lot on my plate right now and I've been on and off sick too. So I'm trying to at least keep up with two or three Venoms a week. But this might be my only two for this week. But I'll try to get some more up to you guys very, very soon. Thanks so much for your patience as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.